If you've ever played Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine for the Genesis or Game Gear or Kirby's Avalanche for the Super Nintendo, then believe it or not, you're already familiar with Puyo Puyo. These games were localized versions of the original Puyo Puyo by Compile. Compile were the developers of the Puyo Puyo franchise until the company went bankrupt and sold the rights to Sega. After that, the series continued to be developed by Sonic Team. The first two Puyo games Sonic Team developed, Everybody Puyo Puyo and Puyo Puyo Fever, were localized in English as Puyo Pop and Puyo Pop Fever respectively. This new trend of releasing Puyo games in English wasn't fated to last though. From Puyo Puyo Fever 2 onward, new Puyo games have been strictly Japan only. It's only very recently that one of the more recent titles, after massive demand from the English-speaking Puyo community, has finally made its way overseas. So what better way to celebrate one of my all-time favorite series coming back to the so-called West than to give Puyo Puyo Tetris a quick review on my brand new Nintendo Switch? Well, I can't think of any better ways right now, so I guess a review's just gonna have to do. Sorry. Puyo Puyo Tetris was originally released in Japan in 2014 for a wide range of platforms. In 2017, to coincide with the launch of the new Nintendo Switch version, both the Switch and the PlayStation 4 versions of the game have been released worldwide, making it the first Puyo game to be released outside Japan since Puyo Puyo Fever in 2004. Puyo Puyo Tetris isn't exactly a typical Puyo game. Even if you're not familiar with Puyo Puyo, there's a pretty big chance you've played Tetris at some point. Puyo Puyo Tetris features both games and even some game modes that combine the two in various ways. If you're not familiar with how the two games work, I'll run through that now. In Puyo Puyo, pairs of colored blobs fall from the top of your board. You can move and rotate them before dropping them into position. Connect four or more of the same color and they'll disappear, and any resting on top will fall down. If the Puyos fall in such a way that they create another group of four, those Puyos will disappear as well. This is called a chain. The longer the chains you make, the more garbage Puyo you'll send to your opponent. Flood their board to the red X at the top and you win the match. In Tetris, blocks fall in groups of four in seven different shapes. If you form a complete horizontal line of blocks across the board, it'll disappear. Blocks on the board aren't affected by gravity and won't fall down unless you clear a line. The more lines you clear in one go, the more garbage you'll send to your opponent's board. Unlike in Puyo Puyo, garbage comes from the bottom rather than falling from the top. Garbage in Tetris can also be used like regular blocks to clear lines, while in Puyo, garbage is useless for making chains and can only be cleared by popping Puyos adjacent to it. What makes Puyo Puyo Tetris unique is the different ways in which Puyo and Tetris can interact and combine with each other. You can have battles in which one player plays with Puyo and the other plays Tetris. There's also swap mode in which you have two boards to play on, one Puyo and one Tetris. Every 30 seconds you switch from one to the other. You only need to flood one of your opponent's boards to win the game. So a good strategy is to time your attack so that one of your opponent's boards has to take all of the garbage. If you split your attacks between the two, it'll take longer to win. Fusion mode is a really weird one. You just have the one board, but both Tetris blocks and Puyos fall onto it and you have to play with both. Tetris pieces will squish through Puyos until they hit the bottom of the board or another Tetris piece, but any Puyos that get squished will fall back onto the board from the top. Chains can also be made by popping Puyos or clearing Tetris lines in rapid succession, which makes it different from both Puyo Puyo and Tetris. And this is just the beginning of the game modes this game has to offer, with tons of other solo and multiplayer modes to sink your teeth into. You can play on your own against computer players or in solo challenge modes, or play with up to four players in local multiplayer. The game also features a a ranked online mode that pairs you up with players of a similar skill level. Of course, you can set up a game to play unranked matches with friends as well. If you're playing on your own, the main draw is going to be the game's adventure mode, where you battle against computer players in various different game modes and difficulty levels. This also serves as the game's story mode, with cutscenes taking place before and after each battle in the campaign. The game's plot isn't really much to write home about, it's fairly simplistic and mostly just serves to justify the different battles you find yourself having. Objectively speaking, the writing is pretty bad, so if you decide to skip the cutscenes, you won't really be missing out on much there. I personally would recommend sitting through them though, because some of the jokes and puns the game throws at you are laugh out loud funny in a so bad it's good kind of way. Some of the jokes I'm not even sure are appropriate for a G rated game. Seriously though, I can't stress how hilarious this game can be at times, I had a lot of good laughs watching the cutscenes. The main story is split into seven acts, each one consisting of ten missions. Most of these are battles against computer players, but some are also short solo challenges for you to beat, like getting a certain amount of 
of points within a time limit. The battle missions are really nicely varied. You'll get the chance to play Puyo vs Puyo, Tetris vs Tetris, Puyo vs Tetris, Tetris vs Puyo, as well as plenty of chances to play the more outlandish modes like Swap, Fusion, and Party Mode. In Party Mode, your aim isn't to flood your opponent's board, but to get more points than them before time runs out. There's also items that fall onto the board which, when popped, grant various buffs for you and debuffs for your opponent. I didn't like this mode much. The items felt more like an annoyance than a fun gameplay mechanic. Then there's Big Bang mode where your aim is to clear pre-made chains and patterns faster than your opponent. Do it faster and better than they do and you'll damage their health bar. The better you do compared with your opponent, the more damage you'll deal. A weird twist on the Endless Fever mode from previous games. Adventure mode has enough variety packed in that by the time you've finished with it, you'll have gotten a good taste of all the different gameplay styles the game has to offer. As much as I enjoyed this aspect of it, I do have some pretty big complaints about Adventure mode. If you lose on a battle enough times, around 5 or so, you'll get the option to activate Help mode. When I first saw this pop up, I assumed it would let me retry the match with some kind of handicap to help me out, but it turns out it just skips the battle altogether. I actually needed to use this a small handful of times. Particularly in some of the Tetris vs Tetris battles later in the game, the AI just seemed too flawless to defeat. They'd never misplace a piece and could easily recover from any amount of garbage I'd fling at them. Maybe I just suck at Tetris, but I'm honestly not too flash at Puyo Puyo either, and any battle where I got to play that felt like a total cakewalk. Maybe the reason for this is that the game's difficulty is balanced for skilled Tetris players who've never played Puyo Puyo before. Or maybe it's just not that well balanced at all. Or maybe I really am the worst Tetris player in history. I honestly can't tell. As for the game's online play, you can either play a ranked match against a random player in Puzzle League mode, or join a room created by a friend. All the game's different modes are playable, and each player can choose to either play Puyo Puyo or Tetris. As we've already established, I'm awful at Tetris, so I stuck to Puyo Puyo, though most of the people I battled were Tetris players. The online leaderboards seem to be dominated by Tetris players too, so I can't help but wonder if there's a balancing issue there. I didn't really have issues taking on Tetris players with Puyo Puyo, so maybe it's just that the skill ceiling's a little bit higher for Tetris. Or it could just be because there are more people playing Tetris overall. Honestly, I have no idea. When I played online, I won some matches and lost some others, which indicates good things about the ranking system. When I used to play online in previous Puyo games which didn't have ranking systems, I consistently got my ass handed to me. This was different, which is good. The online play is surprisingly well fleshed out. You can play in a wide variety of game modes, the ranking system seems really solid, and you get different titles depending on how good you are. You can choose one of the game's characters to represent you as your avatar, and even send pre-written greetings to your opponent before you start your match. I can see myself spending a lot more time playing Puyo Puyo Tetris online, and there was never any shortage of people online to play with, though I worry that might change once Nintendo introduces their monthly subscription fees for online play. Whenever you finish a match, be it solo, multiplayer, or online, you'll be rewarded credits based on how well you do. You can spend these in the in-game shop on alternative skins for Puyos and Tetris pieces, as well as alternate voices for the different characters. Overall, I was really pleasantly surprised at what a fleshed out experience Puyo Puyo Tetris turned out to be. Before I wrap up, I'd like to compliment the game's presentation. The art style is great and the game looks fantastic in HD. There's so much attention to detail put into everything, from the characters, who are all adorable by the way, to the backgrounds in the cutscenes, the menus, and everything else. The game has over 40 different music tracks, so there's no shortage of variety there. A lot of it's recycled from previous Puyo Puyo games, but I can't really complain about that, because it's all pretty pleasing to the ears. The main complaint I have about the game is the very inconsistent difficulty in Adventure Mode. I'd happily have traded the ability to skip any mission I wanted for a more coherent difficulty curve. The storyline could have been a lot better than it was, but the humour and characters still make it worth sitting through, at least for me. All things considered, the flaws are pretty minor relative to the bigger picture. Pio Pio Tetris is still a really solid competitive puzzle game and great fun to play with friends. If you have a Switch or a PS4 for that matter, I'd highly recommend adding this to your collection. I give it 4 out of 5 stars. And if you've been looking to get into Puyo Puyo but you can't afford Puyo Puyo Tetris and you don't have a Switch or a PS4, then don't worry because I have some good news for you. There's actually a community created game for Windows, Mac and Linux with an active player base that you can download for free called Puyo Puyo vs 2. I'll put the link for that in the description as well as a link to Puyo Nexus which is a website run by the English speaking Puyo community. It features a forum and a wiki as well as a discord channel you can join to chat and organize matches with people online. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more reviews like this in the future, then my current plan is to release a new video every fortnight. So if you want to catch those, make sure to subscribe. 
Thanks for watching and have a nice day.